Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi. Who all is here? Uh, we have around 13 participants now and uh, there are still more students to join. So, we will wait for uh, 10 more minutes. We will still have time. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. It's glad to be here. Sure. Yeah, no. Yeah, 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 I'm online now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Okay. Yes. Hey, 15, 20 people are here. Yeah? Come on. Yeah. Shall we check the uh, share screen? If it is possible. Yes, sir. You can do now. I was looking at launching my PPT presentation. It's not showing in the system. I can share directly my screen, uh, directly my uh, desktop also, na? Yes, sir. You can directly share your desktop, or once you click on the share screen, then it will show that which particular screen you want to show. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fine. Is the screen showing on your uh, this thing? Yes, sir. I'm able to see, uh, get your restaurant, how to start and run. It's great, 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 great. That's what I was looking at, actually. Mm -hmm. I've got a very cool presentation for all of you. <laughs> I'll be, this will help you a lot to understand uh, the restaurant business. Who am I speaking to? Hello. I'm Professor Sadaka, so I'm the host over here. And uh, great, so great. nice, so nice, nice, nice meeting you. Yes, talk to you. We have, uh, we will be having Naim Chef and uh, Colin Sir on nine. Just wait. Okay, sure. that will be cool. So uh, I'll, uh, uh, Professor, I'll uh, first finish the presentation. Maybe you can do an introduction then i'll finish the presentation fast and then i was more interested in uh, answering the questions if we have any good afternoon mr colin how are you good afternoon mr kamath how are you i am fine i am fine <laughs> nice having you on uh, on our program yes 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 it's a pleasure to be with uh, dy patil dy patil is one of the most prestigious and uh, uh, very, very reputed, uh, esteemed uh, institutions of Maharashtra as well as of India. So, I'm, it's really a pleasure yes. to join you. And, Same thing uh, applies I'm, to uh, you also that, you know, uh, we are honored to have such a, a experienced person who can give us some good inputs about uh, running and opening of restaurants, you know. Yes, yes. So, it I will benefit would, our would, students a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I am of uh, any help as possible. I want to... This has been my motto uh, for the last five years to, you know, help other people to open their own restaurants because right, right. Uh, so many things happening and people pick up the wrong information and uh, I've seen a lot of bad things happening when they don't have the right uh, tools and strategies. Right, right. I'm here to help and, you know. Yeah, no, even me. even our students, you know, they come from, uh, they come from uh, quite a good number of students whom I know who uh, come from very good family background who own restaurants, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. That's really nice. And uh, this is a very good initiative which you you all people are doing here at DY Patil uh, by by uh, holding these uh, introductory sessions from industry professionals for your students. The reason is, uh, first of all, it's a good use of your time and our, everybody's time. <laughs> You know, uh, I mean, uh, compared to watching uh, uh, negative news and all those things, it's always good to have something productive which you all are doing by bringing us together. 
and uh, secondly it's an inspiration for the uh, younger generation and the students also because uh, instead of uh, putting in negative things in your head if you put positive things it will really take us somewhere that's what i firmly believe so many guys are joining us now that's really cool mm, hello mr gopal naim here hi hi naim sir how are you fine thank you how are you sir i'm doing well i'm doing well yes enjoying lockdown thank you so much for inviting me it's a pleasure and i i intend to make good use out of this one hour which you have given you know to be of help to your uh, student yeah, as and well as uh, yes uh, and uh, mr john colin uh, he's one of the faculties for fnb uh, yes just okay uh, he'll be I also co- yeah he will be also hosting uh, the webinar so you know all the is a very experienced person 35 years you know with obroys so you know this is the best person uh, to ask and all kind of uh, you know technical questions regarding restaurants so yes. uh, so he'll be also co-hosting this and uh, so we'll just uh, wait for a couple of minutes you know for all students to sure. log in and yeah. we'll start definitely definitely looking forward to <laughs> I hope the voice and uh, video is clear. Yes, uh, video is loud and clear. Sir. We'll wait for another five minutes and then we'll take off. Yes, uh, I mean. Okay, so it's two o'clock. Okay, then let's start with our session. Okay, <coughs> okay good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Chef Naim Patan from Deva Patel School of Hospitality and Tourism Studies, uh, along with uh, uh, Mr. John Collin. Okay, uh, we'll be co-hosting this uh, webinar with uh, Mr. Gopal Kamat. Okay, uh, good to have you here for the webinar, sir. Uh, so just a small. Thank you so much for calling. Uh, just a small introduction. Okay, he's the director of uh, um, Kamath Residency Adventure Resort. Uh, it's a very spacious and one of the luxurious resort near Mumbai. And he's also uh, an author. Okay, he's written a couple of books on hotel manager on how to start your restaurant business. And he also is a hospitality trainer. And uh, he also have got a YouTube channel called Get Your Restaurant. So where he gives uh, lectures on uh, how, how to come up, uh, you know, how to 
uh, what are the challenges that people face during the restaurants and how to come up uh, with uh, you know innovative solutions to run your restaurant business successfully so most of the hospitality students and culinary students you know they after finishing their college and after getting some experience in the hotel industry a lot of people they look forward to start their own business but uh, you know a lot of people and students they you know you know hurry they start uh, they take hasty decision and then they you know end up uh, uh, what do you call uh, you know no, not uh, they don't uh, what do you call end up starting a good uh, what do you call a restaurant business so to here to guide you you know uh, you know from beginning to how to start a restaurant how to start from the basic concept uh, the idea of starting of a restaurant till you finally execute uh, the uh, the idea of having your own restaurant okay so uh, mr Go uh, mr gopal will give you insight on what are the you know challenges and what are the technicality that has to be kept in mind okay whenever you want to start uh, your restaurant business or any kind of uh, business uh, you know related to food and beverage so over to mr gopal okay thank you so much nail nail sir and all the faculty Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's a pleasure to be amongst the brightest minds uh, of DY Patil uh, University. And uh, I'm I'm so glad that you do you guys are doing such a great job of uh, enlightening uh, lakhs of people by your courses and your uh, training program. So uh, when I I was asked to come and uh, present about opening, starting, and running your profitable restaurant. i was little uh, uh, confused as to what should i uh, tell you as far as the student uh, category is concerned so i made a small presentation which i am sure will excite you it will give you a lot of insights and uh, it will take you to a lot of uh, uh, unknowns and knowns which uh, generally come up while uh, setting up of a restaurant Uh, learning about the restaurant departments and uh, learning to cook learning to serve learning to accounting and all the things are different and setting up a restaurant is a totally different thing i believe in fact uh, i consider myself as one of the few who has the opportunity to open and uh, uh, you know staff open and run restaurants so it has given me a lot of insights this is just a sharing of insights i'm not boasting or doing anything i just want to share be helpful so let's let's move ahead if everybody is ready Yeah, Mr. Nain. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. You can go ahead. Sir. Okay, cool, good. And any so, uh, students, any questions? If you have, you can ask. Uh, you can uh, ask in the chat uh, once the presentation is done. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so till that time, please understand and try to. If you have any questions, just write it down. Just make a note of it, and after the presentation, then students will have a question answer session with the students. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, so, so let's please move go ahead. ahead. Yeah. So. uh starting with this uh, we are here all to i think some noise is coming in between okay uh, guys anybody has a microphone on uh, just uh, put your microphone on mute so you know there is no disturbance okay sir please go ahead okay so uh, welcome to this live interaction welcome to this live interaction thank you for investing your time with me i respect your time i mean money can come when time doesn't generally uh, replenish itself the goal is to make you understand the basics of the restaurant business and we are all here to learn so please be open to learning and uh, uh, what you need to do now is first of all switch off your phones whatsapp facebook all that uh, notifications and tat tat to whatever is happening uh, i need your full attention this will be a life changing moment for you if you really pay attention and you can take a lot of notes by getting a pen pencil and you know a paper or something be like a sponge basically absorb as much as possible so who is gopal kamath who am i i live in mumbai with my wife and two daughters i i am a restauranter and hotelier there, there is this govindashram chain of restaurants which we have around 34 restaurants all over mumbai and we have the 40 room 5 acre re resort called as the kamath residence resort after uh, doing this day in day out for uh, around 10 to 15 years i've been an and i've been an hotel management graduate from anjuman after doing this for around 10 15 years there came a time when i thought that i should impart this education to other people 
so that I can help them, guide them, consult them to open a successful restaurant. So a few facts about restaurant business. This is basically a myth breaker. Firstly, uh, I'm going really fast so that, uh, you know, uh, at the end I can uh, answer as many questions as possible. So restaurant is basically a lot of hard work. Anybody who is thinking that it is a lottery scheme or get getting rich overnight is basically mistaken. And uh, I believe uh, nobody should have that uh, in their minds that, you know, aaj, aaj to mein log mala mal ho it's not like that. And uh, you have to be successful, but there are chances that you can fail too. I know I'm sounding a little uh, uh, discouraging over here, but uh, it's my uh, duty and responsibility as an industry professional to give you all the facts. And this is one of the biggest facts that you might fail in your restaurant also. There is a chance. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. So what you will uh, get if you stay till the end, first is you'll get an in-depth understanding about the restaurant industry. So believe me, I've been doing this for the 20 years and leaving aside another 10 years of my own personal uh, experience in my restaurants. So, uh, and secondly, you can get a chance to have a 30 minute consultation with me down the line if you if you really want to talk to me. That consultation itself costs around 10,000. I charge that much to consult with people. So uh, why should you listen to me? Uh, I have been successful with restaurant, restaurant for all my life. Telling a few times I have closed down a lot of restaurants. I have literally gone bankrupt and I've got back again to successfully run my restaurants and I've helped a lot of people to open and uh, run their successful restaurants. So enough about me. Let's start about uh, the original crux of the matter, the original. Let's, let's get to the meat of the dish. So how to start and run a profitable restaurant business? Firstly, you have to believe that you can do it. The number one obstacle between you and your successful business is your mindset. This is one of the biggest things which I have to work on when I coach and consult a lot of people to open their own restaurants because they think that they cannot do it. They don't have the experience. They don't have the family. They don't have the know-how. They don't have the strategies. They don't have the confidence. And this is one of the biggest things which really keeps them uh, from achieving their dreams. And secondly, if you can, if you think you can do it, you can really do it. And if you don't think you can do it, then probably you'll not be able to even run a what about shop or forget a restaurant. So always believe in yourself. Strategies, tools, and tactics are available, but you have to first have that inner belief in yourself that you can do it. There was a time when you were a small child that you couldn't tie your shoelaces, but you can tie. So this is one of the most important beliefs if you, that you need to install in yourself. Restaurant business is as basic as it gets. It is not rocket science. You don't need an engineering degree. You don't need uh, to be a uh, Harvard graduate or something like that. You know, it is as simple as it gets. It's the basic need of humanity so uh, before we go any further if you need to go a little bit ahead you can check out the book my book is called is restaurant secrets you can go to get your restaurant.com put your details and you can get it so sorry this thing popped up okay so let's go ahead so here is the single most image which you can ever come across in your life uh, this took me around 20 years to uh, reach here, but I, I am going to give this to you free uh, if you are really interested. I call this as the restaurant building roadmap. So what I, uh, this is basically an illustration of all the things which you require in order to, for you to open your own restaurant. It is a broad representation of your uh, journey and the milestones which you need to cover in order to open a restaurant. I'll be talking in brief about each and every point here so that, you know, you are in, of course, I've been given one hour and usually my trainings are around five or seven hours. So it's, it's really a <laughs> hard thing for me to do, but I will try my level best. So uh, if you want, if you want this, you can go to getyourrestaurant.com and put in your name and email ID and I'll make sure that we mail it to you and let's start. So first is the location. What should be your location? Where would you build your restaurant? and the importance of choosing the right location. So unlike old times, there are a lot of uh, concepts now. So earlier it was just the UDP restaurants and the Pau Bhaji corners and the Vada Pau corners and other kind of things depending on the cuisines wherever in the state is. Now there are multiple uh, concepts serving variety of food products in different, different target clientele. So now the uh, model is literally twisted and turned and mixed and matched in such a way that it has become a big cocktail and mocktail of uh, restaurant concepts as well as the uh, food which they are serving in. So you need to, you, you, uh, choosing a location is very important as far as uh, the uh, restaurant is concerned. It still is the number one priority 
and you will find uh, food at every price point on all the locations but you need to choose which location you want to go in which will give you the maximum uh, uh, maximum sale maximum revenue at the minimum rental or uh, cost as possible so with the entrance of delivery kitchens the question of locational importance and advantage is gone in for a toss so now if you see the delivery kitchens you don't need a beautiful location you don't need a front side facing corner location where a lot of people come in you can have a kitchen literally in your backyard and serve to the whole city so that is one thing which is really challenging this uh, importance of the location so let's go to the second uh, important thing there is the concept what kind of a concept are you going to go for as far as your target clientele are concerned so there are concepts right from small concepts to the large concepts uh, you can say a single cuisine restaurant multi cuisine restaurant ac restaurant non ac restaurants you have lounge bars you have fine dining restaurants you have high end restaurants you have single cuisine high end premium restaurants and then there is the delivery kitchen so you have to think of which concepts you are going to go in what will be the uh, there are concepts from single units up to multiple chains of restaurants you have the qsrs you have the self service fast fast food restaurants so there are the model uh, modest looking restaurants up to ultra posh restaurants there are the cheaper there are cheaper options up to high priced items and all these concepts have a purpose and have evolved to serve respective target clientele and then the third thing is how to arrange your restaurant and what is the capital for your restaurant i teach this in detail because most of the time uh, budgeting and uh, the lack of budget is one of the biggest reasons for a failure of a restaurant and i have seen this happen at least 70 80% of the time not properly budgeting not properly planning your funds and then uh, your restaurant opens up in two or three months the required sale is not got and uh, then probably you don't have the working capital to pay your bills you don't have the working capital to pay your salaries because you have not uh, allocated your working capital and this leads to by the time your restaurant opens in three months four months it creates some buzz then it has some goodwill and it starts attracting Uh, uh customers to your guests to your uh, restaurant you go in that close down mode because you don't pay your vendors on time you don't pay your staff on time you don't pay your uh, electricity bill so you don't pay your rent on time so every everything is in a problem it's like a friction kind of a situation so make sure your accurate budgeting is always essential for a uh, success of a restaurant the planning has to be considered with the overall factors so you don't have to just consider opening a restaurant only the budget till opening a restaurant you have to consider the restaurant at least for another 6 months down the line and insufficient and undercapitalized this is one of the points which i covered earlier undercapitalization is one of the major reasons for failure of a restaurant not having the money to uh, uh, not having the rolling money or working capital to take the restaurant at least till the gestation time uh, is one of the biggest thing which uh, really kills the whole uh, restaurant down financial planning and financial discipline always go hand in hand not that uh, you are uh, even after you do profit if you don't if you lack the financial discipline to properly manage the funds and the capital you can come in real problem as far as running your restaurant is concerned uh, fifth is the selecting of the property and applying of the license what all properties you should select what should be the frontage what should be uh, the requirement what should be the shape what should be look at what should be the height you know what which are advantages uh, uh, things how to research the restaurant how to negotiate and seal the deals with the agent property dealers and all so these all are very important things and which licenses you should apply for there are n number of licenses which you need to apply and uh, i have always i have always uh, uh, focused on uh, doing legal uh, analysis and i always tell that uh, people who don't do legal businesses will come in trouble they might save a few uh, pennies but they will obviously lose the whole business so uh, i plan a restaurant sir one minute one minute uh, guys uh, if anybody has uh, put their uh, speaker uh, please uh, unmute please mute yourself because there's a lot of disturbance coming so if, if anybody has uh, open their uh, uh, unmute themselves please mute themselves because there is lot of disturbance okay people can hear it properly because lot of uh, noises are mixing together
Uh, thank you. Uh, sir, just a request to you, uh, please kindly go a little bit slower uh, because, uh, you know, and and also, uh, you know, if you can explain them to a, you know, in a student point of view about budgeting and uh, finance, you know, uh, in a layman language, that will be much more better for them. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So let's, uh, let's uh, look at the budgeting. Is this uh, speed okay? I was yeah, uh, actually, uh, Naim sir, I was actually more interested in answering the questions. Yes. And so that's why I was thinking of uh, finishing the presentation, but no issues. I'm here to help. So uh, budgeting uh, is about allocating the funds. First of all, you have to secure the funds. So one of the biggest things which I tell each and every person enthusiast who is planning to open a restaurant is to self-reflect on what is your current financial situation. So there are generally, ideally, there are two situations. One thing is you don't have the funds to do a business you're planning to borrow the funds. So nowadays borrowing your funds is very, very easy, but you have to first make sure whether you can afford to borrow the funds. So if your current situation where you're doing a job or you're doing a profession or whatever is kind of like a very cut to cut situation where you are earning and that much is spending, I strongly uh, suggest them not to open a restaurant immediately. The reason is you cannot put, you know, you cannot sail with both your legs in different boats. That's what I tell them. So you have to first be very, very sure that you can afford to open a restaurant and then you can open a restaurant. So after that comes the budgeting. So we have to take in, I have actually a very, very detailed presentation into this. So I really cannot uh, go very, very deep into this, but generally I give you an overall budgeting is basically allocating the whole amount, whatever is required for your restaurant, what the rental, the, uh, uh, the, deposit, the rent, the uh, making of the restaurant, whatever is included in this, the, and plus the six months of the working capital and the promotions budget and everything. This has to be allocated. Most of the, one of the biggest mistakes which people do is they just look at opening the restaurant and they think that, oh no, we'll open the restaurant, we'll start uh, earning and then probably we'll, you know, take care of the working capital. That is the very wrong way to do it. Most of the restaurants which close down is because of lack of proper budgeting. I hope that is clear. Name? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, uh, selecting the property and applying the licenses. So which all properties you have to select? What should be the location? What, uh, uh, what should be nearby the areas? Uh, so what peripheral areas? Should there be residential properties? Should there, should there be official properties? So the, these all things are generally you have to think of while you are selecting the properties and applying of the licenses, all the local licenses which you need to apply have been. So if you go to my uh, uh, Get Your Restaurant website as well as the chan uh, channel, I have done in-depth uh, videos on this about the type of licenses and all the things which are required in order to open your uh, restaurant. So why, why you need to plan your restaurant right? So this is one thing which uh, generally uh, people don't take uh, seriously as far as uh, their uh, operations is concerned and uh, it comes up later in their uh, operations when things don't happen as the way so they have not done the table arrangement night in fact uh, Colin sir who is the uh, FNB uh, faculty over here might be might agree with me that uh, if there if the restaurant is not planned properly if the kitchen is not planned properly there are a lot of uh, operational issues, issues which come up and then uh, that leads to inefficiency as far as service is concerned, as far as guest movement is concerned, there's the flow of the customers and all their things. And that affects your bottom line as well as your profitability. So you have to plan your restaurant right. It has to look professional and uh, it should enhance the ambience. It should not look that as once somebody comes in a restaurant and something out of the place is looking. So you have to really uh, put your thoughts into how your restaurant is planned. Uh, you have to, in it increases the operational efficiency and again, operational efficiency leads to increase in profitability. It's easy for the staff to perform their duties because staff moves very smoothly when the restaurant is planned properly. You have table arrangements where the staff can move in between with the trays and all those things. So you have to make sure your cash counter is somewhere which is easily accessible from all the place. Your parcel counter is somewhere which is easily, takeaway counter is somewhere which is again easily accessible. There is a, a different route for people who are getting the uh, uh, takeaway orders and then there is a different corner which is set up for delivery. So all these things have to be planned accurately 
so that and they have to be thought well in advance not that you know you open a restaurant and then are yaar ye aisa nahi ho raha hai ye waisa nahi ho raha you have to first think of each and everything and probably give a uh, allocate the space to that place allocate the direction to that place so that it doesn't become a problem while you are growing and while you have opened and it also improves the speed of cooking and improves the speed of delivery and wastage so after the uh, planning of the whole kitchen let's think more about planning of the uh, 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 kitchen uh, after the thinking of planning of the whole restaurant let's think about planning of the kitchen so you have to make sure that your uh, food comes fast if your kitchen is not and in fact naim sir is the master in this uh, he has been heading the uh, kitchen uh, in divai party and i'm sure you'll be agreeing that if your kitchen is not planned properly your inventory room your uh, mesa department your this thing your equipment and everything you have a problem with movement of the staff imagine if i mean you guys are teaching mm. in the college and there are so many uh, 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 kids who are uh, so many students who are really cooking food can you imagine if let's say for example outside there are 100 people or 200 people sitting and you don't mm. have a properly planned kitchen how much mm. chaos it can cause and how much problem it can cause mm. so uh, getting fast food uh, getting food fast if you want to get your food fast you have to plan your kitchen right if you want to reduce wastage you have to plan your kitchen right so wastage is not only the uh, material wastage wastage is i am talking about uh, wastage of labor also you know doing double work and all those things are also wastages if you want to retain good staff this is one of the biggest things which i have found that if you don't have a planned kitchen if you don't have the right equipment then good staff will not be in your kitchen because they see good people always believe in working fast good people always being believe in being, being efficient and doing the job as fast as possible right to the right quality so if you don't have give them those kind of facilities you will lose your superstar Uh, employees and this is one thing which i have learned from uh, my earlier mistakes and uh, make sure that uh, you keep that in mind if you want to save energy also you have to so energy wastage everything you have to plan your kitchen right so let's move towards selecting your menu uh, menu is one of the most important uh, as a given the road map towards opening your restaurant your restaurant menu is a road map for your customers to order food from you i know it's a very simple statement but it is one of the biggest uh, mistakes again which a lot of restaurant owners do uh, they don't give a thought to their menu they generally copy their peripheral menus and they generally price the same as the peripheral menus as i mean uh, as if it is going to help uh, it really doesn't help most of the time they price their menu a little less thinking that you know if i price my menu less i will conquer all the customers and i will you know do a lot of profits unfortunately it doesn't happen it usually happens the other way so profitability should be your number one uh, uh, thing which you have to focus when you are planning to uh, set up your menu and menu is a way for your customers to uh, for you to serve food and charge money from your customers so you have to be really serious about it i always suggest my uh, clients and uh, my students to give a 50 50% allocation as far as your uh, uh, menu uh, products are concerned as far as foods and dishes are concerned <laughs> why i generally give a 50 50 50% is what is already selling in the market and 50% is what you can get a little new i would not mind you going a little ahead like 60 40 also because when you open a restaurant the number one thing which uh, uh, as i told you is profitability and uh, profitability always depends on uh, when your customers are coming and having food with you if you give a 100% innovative menu it becomes really hard for your customers to uh, for your guests to uh, relate with the menu they don't know what it will taste like so it is like an overall experiment for them so i would suggest that you should at least have 60 70% of what is running in the market if you are uh, if you are opening a single cuisine restaurant you have to look at the same kind of restaurants and probably give whatever is really selling so that you start making those cash flow from your customers and you know balance your uh, costs and make sure that the remaining 40% of your innovative menu can really uh, give you more of the profits and give them the experience which they are looking for the menu differentiates you from other restaurants so that 30 40% which you are going to give them differently whatever is your fusion food or any other kind of food really will differentiate you but if you keep a completely different menu it might not resonate with your customers this is one thing which i have to really fight for 
with my clients because most of the clients always want to give 100% new menus i have always have to tell them that you have to give whatever is really staple uh, as far as in the restaurant industry on that type of concept and if done right this menu will make you a lot of money and this is the only thing which is really going to make you a lot of money so how to recruit staff so staff is basically the spine of a restaurant this is again uh, uh, i know i am uh, digressing a little bit but uh, uh, most of the restaurant owners don't give any importance to this part that is the recruit staff they treat them bad they uh, don't pay them on time they use their money as their working capital and uh, i mean it's a it's a really bad situation as far as uh, the actual industry is concerned but again there are good people also like us <laughs> self raising a bit so uh, uh, starting is one of the most important uh, thing which uh, will make or break your restaurant i think somebody's mic is on no okay so uh, is it going all well till now it's nice yeah yeah it's going fine sir cool na no? okay so secondly uh, work work towards building and maintaining a very strong team of people because this team of people is going to make you a lot of money i'm just talking about from a restaurant owner's perspective i'm sure uh, making money uh, and uh, talking about uh, being rich is one thing which is generally become being a little bit of straight forwardness but i believe uh, you open a restaurant to make money so the number one thing which you should focus on is the profitability of a restaurant so work towards maintaining a good team make sure you make them comfortable and in my opinion your staff is basically like an extended family if you are a restaurant owner you will be spending more time with your staff than you spend with your own family so you have to treat your staff very nicely and uh, then the last stage which comes up is opening and promoting your restaurant i am sure there are a lot of other things which uh, i have not covered which are in detail and in depth which have to go like branding and uh, you know setting up of the crockery cutlery and all those things but i am just here to give you an overview of what all are important things as far as opening of your uh, restaurant is concerned so promoting your restaurant is like just a moment unlike old times promoting your restaurant is the number one activity a restaurant owner should focus on earlier it was not the case if you find a crowded location and you open a restaurant immediately it would it would start running and people used to come because they are again fed up of all the other restaurants but nowadays things have become very complex because there are so many restaurants opening it every week and uh, i mean forgetting the corona uh, period uh, there are lot of restaurants which are coming in so it is highly highly important for you to promote your restaurant and the number one activity you should focus on is promoting your restaurant and secondly as i have told you profitability should be a priority and managing a successful restaurant requires focusing on all aspects staffing maintaining the quality making sure that your restaurant opens on time making sure the staff is comfortable making sure the quality of food is coming out properly making sure that your service levels are uh, as per the industry standard as per the uh, standard of uh, restaurants which the type of restaurants which you have opened these all things uh, once you start focusing and once you start improving on the feedback which you get from your uh, guests i believe uh, you can and you will open a good successful restaurant so let me ask you are you feeling a little bit like <laughs> uh, overwhelmed are you feeling as if you know a hose of water has uh, come up on you so i i hope not i i wanted to make sure that all these things are put in front of you so that you have a pathway to go ahead and uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, let's uh, as promised if you guys really want to have a 30 minute coaching call just email me on this gopal.tamathetgetyourrestaurant.com and i'll make sure that i find some time and probably we talk so thank you so much for your time naim sir please take it on from yeah uh, yes uh, guys uh, uh, can we uh, now uh, since uh, the presentation is done if you have any questions regarding you know if anybody has any plan to open a restaurant or any kind of uh, this one uh, they can uh, as a question okay somebody have asked okay sir how should uh, be the what should be the marketing strategies for a successful restaurant business and how uh, restaurants make a good profit so it means if anybody wants to open a restaurant so what should be their marketing plan and that's the question yeah, yeah. so uh, nowadays uh, the social media marketing is the cheapest and the best option i believe hmm. so when you are starting to open a restaurant 
you should start covering your marketing right from the day you are building a restaurant because uh, uh, that is what somebody generally doesn't do and they only start opening after the opening the restaurant they start you know mm. posting pictures of their uh, food products and you know a couple of their logos and all those things but you can engage so the, the more you engage your uh, customers and your the people from the audience while building your restaurant the more anticipation is going to come in so there are, you can cover it from facebook is uh, posting a lot about creating your restaurant and then again after opening you can always advertise about opening the restaurant and then mm. once they come in so social media marketing is there instagram mm. is one of the biggest uh, platforms on food in fact uh, you, can, you have a lot of things to share and uh, viral marketing is youtube is also there so all these mm. things you can cover up you can take feedback from your customers you can build your own list by uh, creating a feedback form with mm. having the names their email id their addresses and then you know you can put them in a email sequence sms sequence whatsapp sequence mm. and make sure that whenever you are coming up so you should have a lot of food festivals and lot of events so make it as exciting as possible so that people think of coming mm. to your restaurant uh, vis a vis any other restaurant you have to make it so exciting every day mm. and you have so many in india we are blessed with so many uh, uh, you know uh, festivals and holidays right from starting from republic day and then there is the uh, holy is there valentine day is there so you can literally come up with so many uh, themes to, uh, for your cuisine for your festivals and probably communicate to so communicating frequently with your customers is very important that is how i believe uh, you can market and the uh, mr kamal i have a question for you yeah sure uh yeah i have i have heard of a lot of points which you have to cover to open restaurants but yeah. which is the major major problem you face as far as licenses are concerned uh frankly speaking uh, if you are opening a vegetarian restaurant sir uh, i don't think there are major issues but if you are opening a bar liquor uh, restaurant then the zoning and uh, you have to first make sure that you the place which you are going to pick up is going to have is you are going to get a license so it is more or less like a chicken or a egg kind of a story so uh, licensing uh, as far as vegetarian restaurants are concerned or veg non veg restaurant concerned becomes now but nowadays because of the fire uh, noc uh, it is mandatory for you to have a fire exit because i mean unfortunate event which has happened one or two years back you know in lower parel with correct definitely seven eight people got burnt in yes. that uh, hookah bar yeah after that uh, the fire department has made it mandatory it was necessary actually and it has made it mandatory so you should make sure that you have a fire exit also and uh, you should get a fire noc you should get a police noc you should get a bmc yeah. license you should get a fssci license now uh, i mean post covid now i think the fssci is going to be very strict as far as the corona virus is concerned so there will be lot of pressure on hygiene maintenance and the social distancing of tables also so it is really going to lit- change the whole way we look at licensing and the upkeep and maintenance of the hygiene levels as far as uh, uh, i hope sir one, yeah one question uh, that Thank come you. up with a question uh, okay. so uh, one of the question uh, how to get investors to open a new restaurant means uh, if if you if nobody if, like if Well, you uh, if there's a chef and he got an idea about uh, you know opening a restaurant. So yeah, whom should he approach? You know to get a good investment for his restaurant. Um, so, uh, see, Mr. Naim, uh, the uh, this is a very uh, very very frequent question which I get about investors. So firstly, uh, investor will always put money in you for two reasons. First of all, he but obviously will ask for profits. But secondly, he will always look at what operational experience you have. so ideally i would say that if you are planning to open a restaurant you should first try it with your own money and keep, keep give them a proof of concept a small restaurant maybe where you want to open a uh, you want to serve your food and make a little bit of money out of it to show them that because i mean you can create the biggest uh, profitability statement mm-hmm. from a chartered accountant and it, it is going to be of no use jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai so mm-hmm. uh, you have to first create a proof of concept a small restaurant maybe you have to make money out of it and then probably you can go to an investor and tell them that see i have invested 5 or 10 lakh rupees and i am mm. doing a sale of 7 uh, uh, 3 4 lakh rupees a month or 5 lakh rupees a month i am getting 1 lakh rupees i am just giving you a hypothetical example over here 
Okay. I'm I'm making around fifty thousand or what? Yeah, one. And probably then he will invest and you can open a bigger restaurant. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, just by the time. Okay, just can you just uh, close the PPT uh, so we can all yeah, see? Sure. You. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, one I'll, question, I'll guys. Screen share. Yeah. 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 Please. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. Uh, sir, one question came up. Uh, what should be, you know, what uh, one uh, student, uh, Simran, okay, she asked a question. Uh, what point should be taken into consideration while doing research for a location to open a restaurant? Because That's I think because uh, now, nowadays, I think a lot of uh, people are interested in, I think, uh, what do you call opening a Quesa restaurant, a fast yeah. food chain restaurant. So yeah. I think uh, because that is booming and you know the cash flow is also high. So you know, yes. uh, just uh, what point should be considered? Uh, you know, doing See, I research? generally I generally teach my clients and I generally when I am working with consulting clients, I tell them to work with five five initial top locations. So I don't just tell them to look for one location. I look uh, uh, tell them to look for five locations and then choose one amongst the five. So. All the things which you have to consider while choosing a restaurant, I mean, while looking at the uh, location, is what 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 kind of a floating population is there? Which type of floating population is there? Is it young population? It is old population? So that that should have a lit, uh, mix up with your concept. So if you're opening a Momo, uh, for example, you're opening a Momo QSR. Momo is like basically. The thing which we serve, you cannot sell it to customers who are above 50, 55, 60 or oldies because that is really not going to resonate with them. That is only going to resonate with customers who are from the college going era and the school era. So you have to look at the type of people. You have to look at the flow of people. So there's a lot of research which goes into opening a restaurant. And I believe you have to at least take six months to see what all things are working and what all things are not working for existing players also. And then jot them down and then probably look at a location. So uh, that's one thing which I would look at as far as QSR is concerned. I think one... I hope answer uh, the question. Yeah, this uh, one question came up. Uh, is taking a franchisee make sense in restaurant or fast food chain? Uh, franchisees, yeah, it's, it's a good question. Franchisees... Uh, franchises are generally taken when you really don't have the time to put in in order to run your restaurant. So what happens with franchisee companies and I'm, I'm there are a lot of franchises which are there, there are big companies, but franchisee companies are predominantly interested in selling you the franchise. They, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm going to literally anger a little bit from the industries over here. But I, if you talk about opening your own restaurant and making a franchise, I I would I would really have my bias towards opening your own restaurant. There are many reasons with that. First of all, your franchises include heavy franchisee royalties, heavy franchisee licensing fees. Then you have to stick to their SOPs. You have to stick to their brand. If you if you open a restaurant and probably that thing is not selling, if you want to switch and you want to sell something different, you are tied with the. Uh, <laughs> So it's either R or par as far as your franchise is concerned. So I believe if you really don't have any experience in the hotel industry and you are a brand new to this industry, then probably you can take this as a franchise, picking up a franchise. But if you have a little bit of, uh, I mean, since you, your students and all are having a lot of experience in the operational part because they are studying it for three, four years. I would say that opening a brand of your own would be the best thing for you to do because you have the flexibility. You can go from plan A to plan B. Ye wala khana nahi chala to dusra wala khana chalenge. Health service nahi chala to service karenge. So all those things uh, can be possible if you are not yeah, under a franchise. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, one more good thing, okay? Because yeah. nowadays, I think the food truck idea has been coming up. So one question was there: uh, if uh, if you have to choose between running a food truck or a restaurant, so what would be the uh, best option? See, cost-wise, obviously, uh, running a food truck is always better because you get it. But frankly speaking, uh, the licensing part of a food truck is still in a dicey situation. I have not, I, I mean, I know a couple of, in fact, Naim sir, you also know a couple of uh, mm. friends of ours are uh, having, working in uh, good hotels which have their own food truck. But, mm. but I have not come across any uh, company who has made it profitable because uh, ideally it is like uh, a hotel on wheels. 
but uh, uh, on the back side there are a lot of maintenance issues there are a lot of uh, it is a novel concept you can give uh, but it is really uh, and legally legality wise it is not clear it is really clouded and uh, i would still uh, if you compare me for a food truck as well as a restaurant i would first open a small restaurant make it profitable use the kitchen to uh, create uh, to prepare miza for the food truck and then probably uh, try a food truck but i will not bet all my money on a food truck frankly speaking i mean i i might uh, differ with other people but that's my mm -hmm. personal opinion uh that uh, don't uh, you think J like jw marriage came up with the first food truck yeah yeah uh, how did it do sir uh not very well yeah not very well there mm. there, there, there there is one uh, hotel in chembur jewel of chembur in fact my friend was the uh, head head chef there executive chef and uh, they had come up with three four food truck the reason, i mean why i am little hazy about food trucks is you don't have it is not a stand alone business frankly as of now so when maybe uh, uh, unfortunately the current government is totally open for uh, day and night see because uh, it is more of an experimental stage as far as it is concerned so once the day and night uh, restauranting thing starts there are a lot of people and all then probably it will work but in the afternoon all the food trucks are literally serving uh, uh, more than you know cheap food so and it, it is still a competition into them i don't think that is viable and you have the vehicle uh, biggest uh, impediment is the vehicle uh, you know uh, maintenance cost which really is a big thing and legality is another issue so one day you will stand here next day you will stand there then other day you will park there so how will you be able to generate uh you know uh, how will you be able to generate customer loyalty when you are not at one place at one time every time mm. that is one thing which i feel little uh, uh, which is uh, as an obstacle which is coming it will be the success of a food truck i hope that answers your questions yes the next uh, yeah yeah uh, sir uh, one question uh, like you know some restaurants uh, they like in mumbai you know some restaurants have only snacks okay some restaurants have only like uh, more they focus more on beverages some people focus more on uh, you know the main course dishes you know uh, some people are into qsr restaurant so according yeah. to like the current scenario and you know how like see end of the day any business if, uh, whichever you start the main uh, motive is of course to earn profit so regardless you know whatever you whatever is somebody is opening so what uh, you know what cuisines you think you know will best uh, you know has the most uh, sustainability in the market it kind that of is food. a very very good question that is a million dollar question actually <laughs> so uh, uh, again it depends on what is your location what type of people are there are you targeting the middle class the higher middle class or the rich are you target what is the mix of the customers are there office goers so if you have office goers you cannot in the afternoon you cannot serve them heavy food because they have to eat and then go and uh, work in the office so probably a thali kind of a udipi restaurant will do so it again depends on your location and your concept what is uh, suppose, the price point uh, suppose yeah. if i am opening like a restaurant in a mall so uh -huh. mall of course you get uh, mostly you know weekend crowds and family crowds so even yeah. that there also you know if you go, happen to go in the mall you will find a chinese restaurant an italian restaurant or a fast food right. restaurant an ice cream right. corner but uh, you know uh, so if like if somebody wants to open a you know a, what do you call a kiosk in a mall or any kind of place where there is food fall mostly on mall. weekends and uh, in the, the food mall yes yes so you know what kind of uh, business plan they should have in mind you know to... see if you are if you are opening a restaurant in a food mall where there are other uh, other uh, uh, restaurants also so your food mall has around 7 8 uh, small restaurants there is a common area where uh, people sit and have the table and chairs and all i would strongly suggest first of all you have to be different from your competition because you cannot sell what is already selling because then probably you will end up uh, you know uh, selling the you will end up just splitting the whatever the other person is selling so if there are uh, seven restaurants which are serving different you have to be the eighth one who is serving a food which is totally different that is one thing second thing i would and the that has to match with what what kind of person are coming in the mall so ideally mall uh, malls are generally visited by uh, middle class and higher middle class people age group is from uh, college goers school goers up till up till the office people so probably that food has to resonate with them and the price structure will also has to be economical 
because you give a lot of combos you give a lot of uh, uh, a lot of dishes which are reasonable at the same time to all the other restaurants which are uh, serving so all the other outlets which are serving so let's say there is a chinese restaurant called downtown china there is a uh, south indian restaurant called malguri restaurant there is a uh, indian rest uh, i mean punjabi restaurant north indian restaurant so probably you can open something which is a mix of all three and serve a little bit of maharashtrian food also so you have to be unique because you if you appear the same nobody is going to come to you secondly you have to be reasonable and you have to be relevant as far as what kind of food you are giving i i hope that answers your question sir yeah uh, so uh, yes pan uh, sir uh, any questions from your side no, no. okay uh, you, you know when we are talking about these uh, free standing restaurants okay normally it's like when you open a free standing restaurant the life span of free standing restaurant is around say 5 to 10 years right totally agree do is it advisable to change the cuisine every 5 years or do major changes in the menu uh ideally that's a very good question sir i really appreciate that uh 5 years uh, is what is a good thing to change the menu and change the decor also the reason is absolutely uh, yeah the reason is uh, the customers who are coming to you the guests who are coming to you are regular so if your yeah. restaurant is running for 5 years which in itself will be a big feat because uh, a restaurant which uh, uh, you know succeeds the 2 year mark uh, starts on this success journey all the restaurants which uh, 78 i mean it's the statistics which say that 70% of the restaurants close down within their 6 months and the remaining 50% close down within 2 years of their operation so if you uh, are doing it you have for 5 years you have created a good customer base and it is your imperative duty to make sure that you keep them happy so ideally you can use this 5 years to take a feedback on what other type of food they would like so let's say for example you are serving thai food and they might want lebanese food let's say for example so you can take this from their feedback in this 5 years and then probably uh, do a uh, uh, lebanese and the existing restaurant kind of in combination and probably launch it so ideally it is just to make uh, your duty is to keep your customers happy so i always teach my clients about the herd mentality so there is the uh, in, in, there is a herd where you have your cattle and everywhere which you milk and you know you uh, you make the sheep and you milk and you make your products so you have to make sure that the boundaries of the herd are fixed and you make them happy keep them nurtured and give them what they want so that you can milk them you know <laughs> it is an ideological kind of a thing uh, example but uh, the more you keep them happy the more you give them what they want the more they will stick to you as far as the restaurant is concerned thank you i hope that answers your question sir yes perfect yeah. sure. thank you sir thank you so much okay uh, so just one last question okay uh, yeah. which one is uh, better to open a coffee shop or a restaurant of course i would i would say yes, restaurant is a better option a mm. coffee shop has uh, limitations uh, uh, as far as uh, coffee shop is one of the most struggling uh, concepts out of the whole concept lot lot oh. i'm sure colin uh, uh, sir also agree with me <laughs> i have i have, uh, I have never come across a coffee shop which is only serving coffee and uh, i mean i don't want to name brand names but you know who they are <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely so, yeah so a restaurant uh, uh, is always has the manoeuvring capacity you can add new items you can remove new items you can serve them breakfast lunch evening snacks dinner it is not a place just for conversation it is a place for group people to come in to dine you can take advantage of the weekend weekdays so weekends generally the you know families and come in and at the same time it, in a full fledged restaurant you can really take an advantage of the biggest trend which has come up now is the delivery kitchen so for the past 7 8 years you must be knowing zomato swiggy has taken over the market so you can use that restaurant kitchen and make it kind of a uh, multi purpose you know uh, taking out revenue from all the sources and uh, delivering it using it as a central kitchen and delivering the uh, for the peripheral areas so that will really increase your sales as far as uh, optimizing your uh, utilization of staff and the real estate is possible so restaurant uh, is better naim sir yeah uh, yeah sir one last question okay one of yeah. the guys oh, he said uh, uh, is uh, hiring a food bloggers is the right option for a promotion of a restaurant so normally good, like food yeah it's a brilliant question actually and uh, the higher you go 
as far as so i have created a, a, a restaurant concept pyramid you can go to my channel and check it out so the higher you go in that pyramid and uh, the higher your customer base is the more you will require all these things like food bloggers and uh, videos and uh, you know articles and all those pr mechanism if you are serving to the lower category of customers like the middle class and the normal uh, common man and everything probably the uh, requirement of uh, promotions is lesser because you have more pressure on the pro profitability there are with you you work more on the volume and lesser on the per uh, dish uh, profitability so i believe uh, uh, lounge bars and uh, specialty cuisine restaurants high end restaurants where they are serving specific cuisine specific uh, so uh, it might be a sports bar it might be a lounge bar so uh, all there this uh, food bloggers are more essential the more uh, udp restaurants and the normal restaurants which you are serving probably these things might not help because uh, the elite customers read more because they are ex they are going more for the experience and less for the food the mm -hmm. normal restaurants are there where the people come they they have a price point budget they just want to have food in mm -hmm. their budget they don't they have less time and they just you know go so i believe that answers your question hopefully yeah thank you uh, one question one interesting question yeah. uh, uh, miss uh, shivani has uh, answered a uh, question yes. okay how can a cafe maintain consistency in taste uh, of food over a period of time if chefs quit or on a leave or generally over a long period of time uh restaurant you mean to say yes okay. yes how, uh, so how how can a restaurant maintain the consistency you know in food quality if the chefs are leaving or you know chefs are on leave very or... vital it's a very vital question brilliant question so ideally uh, there are three four things which you need to do first of all you have to make sure your staff doesn't leave you <laughs> that's the prime uh, prime uh, uh, responsibility of a restaurant owner that you have to make sure that your staff stays with you and if your staff is really leaving you quite often and you are really in need of good staff every time then uh, there is an indication that you are not running your place properly that is one thing secondly you have to standardize your operations so let's say for example your food is prepared in a certain way you have to structure you have to standardize your recipes you have to jot them down you have to make sure that you create a system in which each and every item is prepared so that even if any tom dick and harry comes and starts making your food ideally the taste and the quality should be maintained as that is the second thing and third thing is you have to make sure that uh, all the ingredients which you get are standardized and you get it from the right vendors every time so one of the biggest things which i find uh, when a uh, uh, quality of a uh, of a dish changes is that he is not making the food properly or else the ingredients of the food so what comes in what goes in comes out so if you are using a specific kind of an oil specific kind of masala specific kind of potato vegetable chicken mutton fish mm. so that will dictate the ta ultimate taste of your food i'm sure uh, naim sir will also agree with this mm. so yes. standardization of procuring of ingredients is very very vital don't keep on changing you know every time ye sasta hai to ye le tel le lo ye sasta hai to ye le lo because it is ultimately uh, a person who is going to cook the food is working on the process and playing with the ingredients but the ingredients itself have dictated what is coming out so once you have set you know that yahan pe anni kiri mirchi hi chalegi yahan pe groundnut oil hi lagega so you stick with those things don't don't pedal with those uh, ingredients i hope these three things will make sure that you have a brilliant uh, quality of food As yeah. as okay. Uh, just one uh, question. One more question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody asked uh, your uh, view on uh, cold kitchen concept. Okay. Uh, what okay. What's your view on the cold kitchen concept? And also, and also got one question. Okay, because nowadays I think a lot of uh, restaurants are trending. Uh, they are taking. Uh, they are not uh, keeping uh, seating capacity. They are just making a like a takeaway restaurant. Right. So, uh, so is that you know a new way of uh, earning profit uh, to uh, you know to increase your profitability? I had uh, uh, the same view. It's a good question. I had the same view around a year back that uh, a delivery kitchen or a takeaway counter or a uh, kitchen will work be uh, better than a uh, sit-in restaurant, and I was proved wrong because uh, uh, it was uh, one of my friend's restaurant whom I had helped. to make it and uh, it was doing well but uh, one of the biggest disadvantage which a takeaway counter has is they don't have walking customers and uh, walking customers i don't know post corona what the situation is going to be 
but pre corona walking customers uh, help in a bigger way to increase your sale they help in a bigger way to uh, for the cross selling of things uh, advertising of your brand and uh, the people who uh, so the takeaway counter is always looked at a commodity to put it in simpler terms and a sit in restaurant is always looked as an exclusive kind of thing so you can target so many customers when you have a sit in restaurant you can target the uh, passer mm-hmm. buyers office people you know and takeaways are only people who are uh, going to take away your food and they don't have any other option so i think the takeaway customers if they have the time will go in a sit in restaurant and have food the only reason why they are taking away your food is basically because they don't have the time unko ghar jana hai raat ko sona hai next day morning office jana hai so probably they will pick up your food so i think uh, a sit in restaurant is always better uh, than mm-hmm. a take away restaurant and in fact i mean i might uh, be little uh, uh, kind of a protagonist to tell you this but compared to a delivery kitchen also i believe a sit in restaurant works well because i have seen lot of delivery kitchen people coming into this delivery kitchen model uh, knowing that you know we can open in any industrial gala and probably make a lot of money out of that and uh, i've seen so many delivery kitchens uh, because you don't have a face delivery kitchen mm-hmm. doesn't have a face whatever food mm-hmm. you are going to offer you are just going to offer it via zomato swiggy as well as your own network so that cross selling that visibility is not there and that is one of the reasons why people cannot recollect you because people are used to recollect agar aapke ghar ke aaju baaju mein suksagar ka pav bhaji hai and if you want to call for a pav bhaji immediately your mind will come are suksagar se pav bhaji banat because you have been seeing that restaurant from past mm-hmm. 10 years so that doesn't generally happen so uh, in my primary uh, my primary faith, uh, belief is that if you have an option of opening a restaurant versus a delivery kitchen Uh, a little bit of i know it will be a little bit expensive but go for a restaurant because uh, delivery kitchen will make money only for uh, the operators tomato swiggy and all mm-hmm. i have not seen it making money for the delivery kitchen owners frankly speaking mm-hmm. so most of the delivery kitchen owners some of them have started franchising their uh, mm-hmm. delivery kitchen concept but uh, if you talk about uh, which deli- i mean of course there are a lot of big companies who are doing very good but then they have lot of fee funding and all those things so it is very mm-hmm. hard for uh, a layman like me a simple person like me who is uh, you know uh, doing business every day by custom- serving customers and making his profit uh, it is very hard for me to compare my success with that success where valuation comes in and hazaro crore rupya log dal rahe hain and all those things so it is i mean it is cloudy <laughs> Okay then. Okay, uh, uh, all questions are done from my side. I think uh, Colin sir is also. Uh, Thank you. Yes. I hope Colin. Okay. I hope Colin ji, I have answered all your questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, th- okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gopal, on behalf of School of Open and Distance. Uh, sorry, School of uh, Hospitality and Tourism Studies, uh, Deva Pali yes. University. We like to thank you for coming for uh, the webinar. and yeah. uh, it was a very interesting concept and i think uh, you have uh, questioned all the queries which students have asked if any yes. other queries are there of course to you have given your details so students will get in touch with you so yes. and uh, thank you for putting uh, giving your valuable uh, inputs uh, and we hope to see you soon okay and uh, some other sessions of course definitely will also when the college reopens we will also like to invite you to our college and you know we'll yeah, have uh, yeah like uh, interaction and a uh, seminar along with you so uh, for now okay thank you very much okay and You're most welcome all the welcome. and thank you all the participants for being here on the webinar yeah. okay thank you very much okay, okay. bye bye take care bye 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 कसं वाटलं आवडलं